It's time for another in the series of Laws of Light. Today we're going to look at the cylinder, the transitional object. So today the cylinder is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is an incredible library of videos and tutorials taught by some of the greatest people, professors and photographers of the world. They've got a library of over 7,000 topics, everything from math to chess to cooking to photography. One of my favorite was the National Geographic Master Series. Those geographic photographers show you how to go on location, how to shoot in mixed light situations, fabulous tutorials. Viewers from the Slant Lens are going to be treated to a one month free trial if you go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash the Slant Lens or click on the link below. But now let's get back to the cylinder. There's an important reason we got to talk about the cylinder today because the cylinder is a transitional object and it's really important that we understand that. Today we're going to light a cylinder. We've talked about a sphere, we've talked about a cube, and if you haven't seen those, you better go back and look at those because this is a building process and you're not going to understand this one at all. So, let's now move forward with our cylinder. A cylinder is a combination between a sphere and a cube, obviously. We've got a round surface. This round surface gives us all the qualities that the sphere had. We have a highlight side, an incident highlight. We have a core, we have a shadow, we have a cast shadow. We have all five of those things happening on our cylinder. The way to control the light on this is twofold. Our light can go around, which gives us more or less highlight. Or we can go up or down to create a darker or lighter surface on the top. When we have a subject that, that, that is this tall, the second issue that was created is our cast shadow. Now the cast shadow, as we get the light higher and higher, becomes shorter and shorter, which can be good or bad. But in doing that, it makes the top of our subject brighter and brighter. So if I want a short cast shadow, and I'm getting too much light on the top of my cylinder, a lot of times I'll come in with something small, a piece of diffusion or something, and just try to hit the top of the cylinder to take it down just a little bit. But if you can live with that long shadow, then raising it up and down is the easiest way to control the light on the top here. The cylinder lives in the same world as the sphere when it comes to separation. We've got our light on in the background that creates our separation. We can bring a fill card in to fill it from the side. We can diminish that. Even if I get this fill card in as far as I want, I still see a little bit of that core there. There's just a tiny bit of it. It's pretty hard to get rid of it completely. So let's take a look at some images that illustrate cylinders. So there's our cylinder, the transitional object. I call it the transitional object because it is now making us transition from simply lighting a single object, a single square, a single sphere, to having to combine surfaces. We're combining surfaces and that makes us have to consider our light in a much different way. If you understand how to combine surfaces, it allows you now to shoot a sphere, a face, and a square, a car, and light both of those at the same time. I'm understanding both of these objects at the same time. I'm lighting for both of them at the same time. I'm not just lighting for one or the other. You need to understand transitional objects and how they relate to actual objects in life because very few things in life are a sphere or a square. Sure, you may shoot a box of cereal, you may shoot a round ball, but the reality is most of the time we're all shooting and lighting combinations of surfaces and objects. Our next lesson is going to move us one step further. We're now going to combine several objects together, a ball cube and a cylinder, and we're going to have to light them and separate them from one another. It's going to make it more difficult, but it's going to relate more to life. So check it out in the next lesson. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. One of my favorite things to do in this industry is to mentor other photographers and videographers. Uh, it's really the area of this whole work that has brought me the most satisfaction personally because I can sit down with individuals, help them overcome problems, and I, I can see the answers. And it's just so gratifying to help them see the answers and see them move forward and become more successful. Everything from pricing to how to shoot images to how to organize your studio, all those kinds of issues. Now, let's sit down together, we'll talk about what we can do to help you to accomplish the things you want to do. I hope you understand maybe some of the things you don't quite see that you do need to be focusing on. But you go to thesilentlens.com, there's a mentoring button there, just click on that button, you can sign up there. 
an opportunity for me to Skype with you or we could talk about the things you need to work on and just help you move forward. So keep those counters rolling, keep on clicking. You should subscribe to The Slanted Lens. It may not save your life, but why risk it? Just push that button right there.